Is the PS5 Pro really necessary? Are the upgrades really big enough to make the justified switch? From the presentation we saw, the main things they focused on was a better GPU, better ray tracing, and AI upscaling. And I think the most prominent and I guess important feature um, from those three would be the AI upscaling. Um, I guess the better GPU, you know, it's nice, but it's not really that big of a jump, I feel like. And then the better ray tracing. Uh, I guess that will help developers, um, you know, implement, I guess, just uh, ray tracing into their games while having to sacrifice as much power. So I guess that's good. Um, but I think the AI upscaling is definitely the main focus um but yeah i mean the graphical upgrades that we saw from the presentation you seem very minimal and i don't really see you know a big difference that just jumps out you know for the eyes of the consumer in my opinion um when they were showing you know comparisons between the ps5 and the ps5 pro I think the main three games they compared were um, The Last of Us Part 2 Remastered, um, Spider-Man, and then Ratchet and, Clank, Ratchet and Clank. And yeah, of course, you know, you can see some well, of a difference. You know, some of, you know, I guess the density within, you know, certain areas of the game seem more populated um you know there's i guess better um, plant foliage and you know, i guess some of the images just look sharper which you know it's nice but the thing is when you're playing these games i feel like you're always you know constantly moving especially you know in games like spider-man or ratchet and clank you know the gameplay is more fast-paced and like for example if you're playing spider-man and you're swinging you know across new york are you really gonna you know notice <laughs> every single you know sharpened pixel from the ps5 pro you know i feel like well when you're playing the game just on the regular ps5 it's the graphics are already you know pretty good right um even you know for me i don't play on 4k because i just don't have you know 4k tv or 4k monitor i play on 1440 right but it still looks good um so that just makes me think that it's like these consoles i feel like are too hyper fixed on making the graphics you know like having the every single pixel look look as sharpened as it can be whereas i feel like they should focus more on you know just quality of life um improvements for their consoles so things like um faster loading times um we we do see you know quick loading times in certain games that i feel like are more optimized for for their uh, their console um but it would be nice to see like um just like third party games or just you know just more games in general where we, we have faster load uh, faster load times um because the game that comes to my mind um that came out recently is uh black Myth wukong um you know it, that's a great game and you know a potential game of the year but you know when you die and then you gotta wait for the loading times it kind of you know hinders you know the the not the quality of the game but because it's still a great game but it's like you know if you could just remove those those loading times it would be you know just more convenient and um so yeah if they could do that you know it would be great um you know also of course more more storage um they are releasing the ps5 pro 
without you know a disk drive um so you're gonna have to unless you you know buy the actual disk drive which i don't know how much it was i think 80 dollars um but yeah if you don't buy it you got you got have to download all of your games and i think the storage they showed off was um two terabytes which you know it's not nothing but with the size of games that are being released nowadays it's you know it's not you know anything crazy which is <laughs> which i feel like is, is a crazy statement within itself right because like you know you have you know storages that you know can reach up to two terabytes <laughs> but you we have all these large games where it's like is two terabytes even even enough storage now so even that statement is just crazy crazy to say nowadays um also you know i feel like just focusing more on fps would be nice um on the presentation i think you know i don't know if it was the presentation or, or the reveal the actual reveal trailer but they show like like hey you know like our system can play up to 120 fps and it's like i'm pretty sure the standard ps5 can do that uh, i don't know if they decided to show like hey the ps5 pro can you know do 120 fps but it can do now do it on like more games um so like you know i'm pretty sure um you know the ps5 pro can definitely um improve the fps of games that are you know stuck on lower fps um um rates uh on the normal ps5 but um yeah i mean 120 it's like you know if you could at least boost that to like 144 for some games then it's like okay well now you have something to compare the ps5 pro with the normal ps5 um but i don't know I, i'm not really no knowledgeable enough about that oh yeah so is there really enough ps5 exclusives to you know justify making a ps5 pro because i feel like most of the games that have been released in this console generation have been cross um, platform and it's like we haven't i feel like we haven't really even seen games fully take advantage of the power of the normal ps5 so it's like is there even a game out there already that will take full advantage of the power of the ps5 pro so it's like we need more games that are pushing the limit of the ps5 in order to even justify making an upgrade to a ps5 pro where it's like there there are really no games that are that are really even like hindering or getting hindered um on the normal ps5 i guess for me the game that seems like it could be improved would like i get <laughs> i already said it before but um black myth wukong um there is a bit of, like stuttering um when there's a bunch of like um you know effects going on and you know the fights do uh the bigger they are the more you know i guess choppy <laughs> the gameplay is even so even though i'm still having a great time playing it you know but um that is one game where i'm like okay this is starting to you know um <laughs> i guess push the ps5 to its limits so that is one game where i can see it improving on the ps5 pro and then of course there's a gta 6 which will either be released in 2025 like it was uh, promoted to be or it's and my guess it's probably going to be um delayed until 2026 but yeah i can see that game possibly um you know pushing the ps5 pro to its limits um but yeah other than other than those two games i can't really think of uh, any others uh, right now but yeah i think the main thing getting people upset is 
the $700 price tag, which is understandable. I mean, I don't, I don't have $700 laying around, um, so it's not in my best interest to spend that money on a, you know, an upgrade that I don't deem justified. Um, but of course, there's gonna be people out there who have that money, and those are gonna be the people that buy the console. And it's like, you know, if you can afford it, then that's great. But if you can't, then I would just say stick with the your original PS5. Um, and if you don't have a PS5 and you wanna, you know, you're playing on PS4, or PS4 Pro right now, or let's say. You know, you're still playing on Xbox or whatever, and you want to play, you know, PlayStation exclusives. Then, yeah, I could see you buying a PS5 Pro and just not getting a standard PS5. Um, but with that, you know, with that price tag as well, I can see, you know, people justifying, you know, a reason to just also make a switch to PC gaming. Because it's like, uh, if you want a good P a good PC that you know is either in you know competition with the PS5 Pro or even better then you can, you can just spend an extra hundred dollars if you wanted to and then that will last you possibly who knows even even past the PlayStation 6 <laughs> um, but yeah also I think it's like they and uh, the, the Nintendo Switch will most likely come out um, next year, and it's like I feel like the Switch. If you haven't gotten one, then that you could pro possibly just buy a Switch over a PS5 Pro. So then you can have you know Nintendo exclusives, and then you can have PlayStation exclusives. Um, I mean, I recently. Uh, I just got a Nintendo Switch because um, I just wanted to play their exclusives and I've always, you know just had PlayStation, right? because um, when you're younger <laughs> you either were a Nintendo kid, a PlayStation kid or an uh, Xbox kid and it's like I was a PlayStation kid now it's like I can afford whatever so I was like, okay, I'll get the, the Nintendo for the ex exclusives um, whereas Xbox, I don't really see a reason to buy it, um, because it's like, you can play Xbox games basically wherever. Um, but yeah, I'm kind of just rambling now, <laughs> kind of getting off topic, but yeah, those are pretty much my thoughts on the PS5 Pro.